Back at it again, in Stellaris for the Birch World Challenge Part 2 Actually Challenging Edition. This is a remake of my short Stellaris series I did recently, where I'm adding more rules to my challenge run to try and make it into a challenge run. We're playing as a different faction this time, you belong in a museum, and that title is going to inform our playstyle for this. And again we're going to be doing the Birch World Start. I'm setting the Crisis Strength up high, I was going to go for 25, but that seems like quite a lot, so I ended up picking 10 for the Crisis Strength. Meaning, combined with the fact I'm going to be banning the use of the more powerful mega structures, we should be able to get something of a challenge going, but this campaign is not going to be so much about the Crisis like the last one was. We're going to focus more on the actual campaign against the other factions, and not try to work with them, which I did last time. I'm also going to disable the Event Horizon part of the Gigastructures mod, which is the main mod I'm using, because basically I've just done it in real life, I've seen that quest chain, and I know that you have to do it in order to defeat the associated crisis it eventually creates, so you can't ignore it, and I couldn't be bothered, I wanted to do something else, so basically I just disabled that entire thing, and I disabled the super weapons and the mega structure that massively increases your naval capacity because that's overpowered as well. So, the main rule we're going to be using in this campaign is that I'm not allowed to occupy territory outside of what we're seeing right here, the core. We're going to be the museum race. We sit in the core and our plan will be to not gain population for our birch world using immigration but to go and just steal population from the other factions and collect them together into our museum and then maybe at the end the crisis will kill us or maybe not, we'll see. I hope at least it will kill everyone outside of the museum at the very least. And by the way, if you're not aware, the whole thing with this Birch World start is that you can't build things unless you have a giant population. You're allowed to build one new district every time you get a hundred population so your main priority is to just get as many people as possible. In my previous attempt at this challenge, I did it using the immigration system. You can triple or quadruple your population growth by spamming immigration. And it sort of worked, but I realized at the end of that challenge that you can actually just take people from other factions, and I thought that might be a bit more effective. So that's what this challenge is going to be about. We start taking over our initial area, we have to research a certain uh, project in order to get out of the Galaxy Core from this start, which takes like 10 years, so we sit around for a long time. But eventually we discover another faction, and it's also some weird squirrel guys. We are the Doom Squirrels, and now this other squirrel race turns out to be right next to us as it happens, so we've got ourselves some true rivals. They're in a perfect position though, they're just on the end of the lane that takes us out of the galaxy core and into the galaxy at large. They're right there, for the pickings, so I thought it's time to test out my strategy. Can we steal their stuff? Unfortunately, they're equivalent to us in fleet power. At the start of the game here, I guess we're all going to be equivalent because nobody really has anything. We'll need to do something about that. Now, the first way I thought we could try and steal their population is to gradually claim all of their territory, then we can do a war of conquest to take it, move all of the people off their planets onto the birch world, and then abandon the territory. That was my vague plan. There's a much better way of doing it as it turns out, and I'll discover that soon enough, so we'll get to that in a while. For now we're doing this the very slow and not very friendly to my challenge run rules way, of actually temporarily taking places outside of my allotted area in order to deconstruct them later. So I've claimed some of their territory now, I've built a whole bunch of early game corvettes that probably suck, and we're just going to go for it, safe in the knowledge that they probably also just have a bunch of early game corvettes. I'm also making an army here ready to take planets. Luckily the Doom Squirrels have the strong trait, making them have better armies than other races, so in the beginning with no one having any army techs we should have the advantage there, plus you can just spam numbers with armies. Here's the first battle, we sail out into enemy space and they send a fleet to stop us, their fleet's a bit better than our individual fleets but we have two of them so we can still outnumber and overpower the enemy. Although it's going to be a very slow and unimpressive battle, because both sides presumably have like no weapons technology, 
We're just blasting at each other and even corvettes which have like no health can survive for a long time in this battle, so we wait for them to die. A few of our ships will be dying as well. And this starts to bring up a problem I hadn't really encountered before in Stellaris, and that is the problem of taking casualties. Usually when I fight a war in Stellaris, you just instantly win and there's not that much to it. But when the two sides are really matched, you're going to lose like half of your fleet in these battles. And as it turns out, that actually has a major impact on your war exhaustion. I've never seen my war exhaustion significantly go up, but we'll see here after these battles. Our exhaustion is going to go up quite fast, actually. You can see by the time the second battle comes about, both sides are kind of losing the same amount. It felt like we destroyed more of their ships, but maybe ours has gone up faster because we're the attacker or something. I think it naturally goes up faster if you're the attacker. There's another example, we take an enemy space station and then our exhaustion goes up a whole bunch, we're now losing the war just because we're losing corvettes to take this enemy territory and it's all adding to the casualty counts and stuff. There's a whole bunch of numbers here that add up to we're slightly losing. So I decided to be a bit less aggressive, especially because I've now taken all the territories I have claims on. So. I kind of just need the enemy to get bored and be willing to have a peace treaty and then I can keep the stuff I've taken. And while I wait, I can bring up more ships from our birch world. The thing is, while I was waiting, the enemy were also making more ships. They probably have more shipyards than me because they have a few stations already. And another fresh fleet comes here to challenge my two damaged fleets. Comparing the numbers, we still probably have enough stuff here, especially because the captured station will fight a little bit on our side. But the thing to keep in mind is that I'm playing on Commodore difficulty, I think. I'm not quite sure what it does, but as far as I know, the way difficulty works in this game is just the AI cheats. So we're two or three tiers up from the difficulty where they don't cheat. I don't know what cheats they're using, but they did seem to make their fleet suspiciously quickly and with no resources, so maybe they've got something going on there. So we fight them, we win that battle, but by the end of it, We've got like no troops left or no ships left, our war exhaustion is getting real high. So I decided to actually start going back and thinking I need to get closer to the birch world to be closer to my line of reinforcement, especially because I could see more stuff is just being spammed towards me. So I end up giving up this area that actually has an enemy colony in it. That was their capital actually, I think. A shame, but it was required to stop things getting worse, or maybe it was anyway. It became clear the enemy actually did have a stronger overall fleet than me. Plus, their fleet's kind of more concentrated because many of my ships are gradually coming from the birch world. Some of them are far away. So the frontline presence of the two sides is unbalanced. If they really just slammed everything they had into me, we'd definitely lose. Keeping that in mind, I tried to lay low and just sort of sit in a few systems, hope that maybe the enemy wouldn't attack me too much. And we were successful, I think, in this regard. The enemy did push us back a couple of systems, but not all the way. They stopped attacking me, which was great. I could build up a few more ships. And more importantly, wait for the enemy's war exhaustion to go up because it just keeps going up over time, even if you're not fighting them. And it got to the point when I could grab this status quo piece, which means you keep what you have occupied and claimed at the moment. So we end up taking these three relatively pointless systems, but more importantly we get out of the war, which I think we would eventually have lost if we really waited. So that was a bit of a wake up call. We probably need to make some good ships, things that aren't corvettes and get some techs and stuff, before we can reliably go out and defeat other people in the galaxy. I was so used to just always instantly winning wars, that I forgot that maybe yeah in the early game we're not actually going to be more powerful than the enemy. So we do need to factor that in. We have to wait 10 years before we can attack them again, so we're back to just sitting around really. In the meantime, I started claiming more of their stuff. The logic behind me taking their systems and not immediately disbanding them, which of course breaks my own challenge run rules, was that if you have territory near the enemy, this makes it cheaper for you to claim their territory and thus get the conquer Casus Belli so I can go and take it later. This of course all relies on my assumption that we need to claim all of their territory to take it, which is not actually the case, as alluded to earlier. We'll get back to that. So that's what I'm doing, sitting around, 
and just spending influence on their territory. Luckily, I've got nothing else to spend it on as it stands. Here is version 2 of our war against the evil other squirrels. Or maybe we're the evil ones. We're coming in here with some better ships this time. I've got a bunch of destroyers. I think I might have even had a frigate or a cruiser or something. I noticed though the enemy do have this one system with loads of fleet strength in it, but in more detail, some of it's on the other side of the system. And because battles take place in a set radius, I can invade them and I'll have a certain amount of time before that second fleet can join the battle. And in the early game, fleets move quite slowly with their sublight speed stats being low. So that means we actually have enough time to fight a battle entirely separately over here, right on the edge of the system. Take out these portions of the fleet with our overwhelming concentrated strength, in which we barely lose anything. Then the rest of the enemy ships will show up too late and will be fine. And this time, because we're not taking casualties, the war exhaustion thing is not an issue. They'll be gaining it. We won't. This is more like it. We're straight back into the familiar rhythm of just plowing through and blowing up the enemy's fleets at the start of the war. Then you can take out their shipyard so they can't make another one. And that's going to be the end of the war, except for the boring part where you have to go and do all of the stuff to gain war score. Luckily, we can skip over that for the purposes of this series. So here we are. Sometime later, we've done a whole bunch of occupation, taken a whole bunch of planets, and the war ends. You can see we don't take everything because I hadn't claimed everything, we've just taken a block of their territory, but it was one that had all but one of their planets in it. I thought it might be nice to actually leave them alive as a faction with one planet so they can build back. The idea being that we can come back to this well again, if they gain some more population, we'll come back later and steal those pops as well so we can use them as incubators of sorts. Anyway, here's the real payoff. Once we have their planets, we stop time and relocate everything into the birch world. This does cost energy credits to do, but one of our civics makes it less expensive than usual. Well, the cost was fine, basically. And that's that. Now we have loads of people on the birch world. I think we tripled our population with that cheeky move, so that's pretty good. The thing is, 100% of them are criminals or something. We've got a 100% crime rate. Everybody's doing something that's against the law. So clearly injecting this population in has destabilized things a little bit. I don't have enough resources to build a new district to give them all jobs either. So that's inconvenient. We can get around all economic issues though by spamming the market, of course, which is how our economy works in general. We'll buy up a whole bunch of minerals to start building a new giant district that will provide 150 or so extra jobs. That will be fine. To deal with the crime, I thought maybe I'll build the precinct houses building, which creates enforcer jobs and reduces crime apparently. But not by very much, as it turns out, so that was a waste of time. We now need to get back on track with the challenge run rules by disbanding all of the outposts and star bases. That means all of this territory just goes back to being empty like it was at the beginning of the game. And that's that. It does mean I can't easily claim new territories, but this was the point when I began to realize I don't need to do that. So never mind that. Let's just pretend the challenge run starts now so that we actually keep within the rules. And anyway, Back home, I noticed some criminal jobs have become available, despite there also being unemployment. So we've got a weird unemployment situation going on. People could commit crimes to try and make a life for themselves, but they don't want to do that either. So we end up waiting for the enforcers and the new district to come about, but the enforcing thing doesn't really do anything. It slightly decreases crime, but, but not by enough to bring it below 100%. It's actually like 300% or something. I have no idea how this crime system works because I've never seen it go above like zero before. Anyway, it turns out a few people become criminals, it doesn't matter, and eventually they all go away for reasons that I didn't notice. Here you can see we've discovered a few more factions, so more potential targets, but no one else who's like right up against the interior of the galaxy, nice and easy for us to go and steal from. We'll take a look at other factions again in a second. Here you can see the Birch World now just mysteriously looks fine. So everything got sorted out. Maybe it was adding more jobs that did it, but the criminals went away. We went back to 0%. I think people have come to accept that yes, they do belong in a museum and they need to stop being uppity about it. Next, we're skipping quite far into the future. 
When my next war began, here I am setting up next to a wormhole that will lead me to my target. The wormhole's in the west, but my target's in the east. We'll look at the map in a second. But here's me getting into this new plan for how we can do our challenge run strategy. Using this roundabout way of taking people's territory without having to claim it. First, you go to someone random and ask them to be your protectorate. They'll virtually always say no. But if they say no, it gives you a special casus belli, which is that if you declare war within the next year, you can have the war goal be to force them to be your protectorate. And then there's this other rule where your protectorate gets some massive bonus to their tech research speed. And if they research up to a point when they've got half or more of your techs, you can do this integrate subject thing where you trade influence for the enemy systems and just get them. So in a roundabout sort of way, we can very slowly conquer entire other factions using this system. We just have to first win a vassalization war so they become our protectorate, then wait for a while, absorb them into our faction, stop time, destroy their faction and move all their stuff into the birch world, and then we should have a nice clean museum steel with no rule violations. It does mean we have to completely destroy the enemy faction in order to achieve this, but it's worth it to make things nice and clean and keep to the rules, I guess. So with that explanation aside, I send all of my ships off to fight some random faction in the east end of the galaxy, and it's going to be a case where we can't really lose this war because they've already spied them out and seen that our fleet's better than theirs. So we're just going to come in and do the boring work of taking over enough of their stuff to force them to surrender. Luckily, with vassalization wars, you don't actually have to take everything to get enough war score to make them surrender. Because they're kind of remaining intact, it's not like a complete surrender on their part. So just taking their space but not their planets or something is sometimes enough to get them to just give up. I do also, by the way, in this war have to fight the purple faction to the south of the guys I'm invading because they were allied or something. So that's annoying, it means I have to occupy more territory in order for the occupation score in general to go up as much. Luckily, neither faction are in a position to stop us, so I didn't mind declaring war on both of them. I'm not going to show too much of this war because it was very long, but not in a very interesting sort of way. They kept recapturing systems while I wasn't paying attention, which I complained about in my previous Birch World campaign. I need to split my fleets up more towards the end of the war to cover more ground, basically to stop the enemy doing that. But anyway, when we did have fleet engagements, they just lost because our fleets are better than theirs. They haven't focused on research or something as much as me. We have some better weapons and my fleets are more concentrated at first, which allows me to overpower them in lots of small battles with the divide and conquer method. There's the most uh, interesting battle of the war that took place when we fought two of their not particularly good fleets at once. And we won, so that was that. And here's a clip of me fighting the guys I'm actually here to fight, the guys I'm trying to make a protectorate of. They were weaker than the Seven Empire, the purple guys to the south, so that was easy enough. I thought we might have some trouble with this campaign, trying to be very militaristic early on. But not really, by just filling the birch world with mainly research labs and buying exotic gases so we can upgrade them, we can race ahead of other factions because they probably don't have that many research labs across their many planets and they're probably not upgraded. So even with very few buildings, we can out-research other factions just because the AI isn't focusing so much on it. And here we can see the end of the war. Eventually we've got enough war score to form a protectorate and that's that. We have to wait at least 10 years before we're allowed to integrate them. So that will be on the back burner they're out there making population for us to harvest later on. I did want to make protectorates of the two factions next to them because they both had inferior fleet strength to me, but they're also at war with each other. And it turns out there's an annoying technicality. You can't go through this whole protectorate war thing if they're at war with someone else at the same time. So we ended up having to go home after setting up ready to make this invasion and being disappointed. A shame, but there are plenty more factions in the galaxy. We just look around. Some of them actually did have equal fleet power to us, but one group that didn't was this big faction to the south. That faction also has 
the other Doom Squirrels, the good Doom Squirrels, as their vassal. So we can take both of them at the same time if we make the Master into our Protectorate. They have inferior fleet strength, so it's go time. And this is basically this campaign. We can just do this as many times as we want and absorb as many factions as we want. But we also need to keep in mind that if we absorb a faction, they're no longer generating population for us to absorb later. So I feel like the real ultimate way to do this would have been not to go really early on the aggression, but to just sit in the corner, building up a research lead as best you can, and then appear in the year 2400 and protectorate everything and absorb the entire galaxy once they're fully developed. So there we go, we've already got a better strat than the one I'm using developed, but we're using this one now, so we will go forward into part two with me just making a protectorate out of everyone, if only to see if the game will stop me from doing it and seeing how many people we really can gather into our museum with the ultimate goal of maybe keeping them alive when some 10 times multiplied endgame crisis comes along and ruins everything. And of course, they're going to ruin everything more than usual because some of the AI factions that would normally be there to wear them down will be mysteriously gone. If we get really lucky, maybe the galaxy will be completely empty by the time the crisis shows up. I think that could be quite amusing. We'll try it anyway. Join me for part two.